This is Valloween. Valloween, Valloween. <laughs> Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today, Tracy of Tracy Vanover Designs has brought us together to celebrate Valloween, a mashup of Valentine's and Halloween. And look at all this talent. Tracy herself, Marina of Marina's Corner, Nancy of the Handy Scandy, Annie of Crafting with Indiana Jones, Martina of the Holiday Workshop, Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, and me. Hi. This is a good one today, guys. You're going to love it. I've got two projects for you today. Let's get into it. We'll be using Model Magic, a foam egg, and a wood disc to start. I cut my foam egg in two. I went about two-thirds of the way down from the top, you know, the oval part, and I've rolled out a big old handful of clay until it's nice and flat. I'll lay some of the clay over the rounded part of this smaller piece of my egg, pressing it nice and firm, to ensure that it's well stuck to the foam. And then I'm gonna trim off any excess. Please excuse my voice, I'm just getting over a cold, so I apologize. <laughs> I smooth out the clay by rolling it on the table and I cover the flat side with clay as well. This section of the egg is gonna be the witch's head. I'm going to roll over the seams of the clay with my tool handle to incorporate it and blend the two clays together so that, you know, it's a nice flush seam. Now I'll do the same exact thing with the larger section of the egg. And once I get that nice and smooth, I'll flip it over and add clay to the bottom. To make her hat, I'll start with the brim, and I use a jar lid as a cookie cutter and punch out a nice size circle from my clay, and I'll smooth out the rough edges just using my fingers. To make the cone of her hat, I'll roll out a ball of clay and I'll apply pressure to the one end. This will form the point. Once I've got the point going there, I'm going to push the bottom of the cone flat and wide. And you can see I just kind of push it down on the table and use my hands to kind of widen it a wee bit. Let's make the point pointier <laughs> and we'll add a wee bend to it. I add the cone to the brim incorporating the seam where the clay meets by rolling over it with my tool handle. You know, this is what I always do. I find it's the easiest way to blend the two clays together by doing it this way. But you know, you might have a better way. So do whatever feels right. Okay, to make her legs, I roll a cane of clay and I'm gonna cut it to size. Once I have her legs cut out, I'll flatten and slightly widen the end that will be attached to her body. And again, I'm just doing this by, you know, pushing it down on the table to get it nice and flat. I've rolled two small balls that will attach to the front of her legs as her shoes. I'm just pushing them on there. They'll stick to themselves. And of course I'll incorporate them just like I did with all the other clay, rolling my tool handle over it. Now we're going to add skewers to them a wee bit later. I roll a cane for her arms too, and two more small balls. The balls will be the puffs of her sleeves. So here I'm just going to cut my arms out, and I'll... You know, smush it with my fingers to kind of get a rounded edge for um, where her hand's going to go. These will be her puffy sleeves. See, they'll go on the end just like that. I've broken a toothpick in half, which I'll insert into the sides of her body to anchor her arms. Then I'm going to add the puffs and then her arms on top of that. And I'm going to add a drop of tacky glue to attach the arms to the puffs, just for a little extra security. I cut down a skewer to stabilize her legs, and I'm just going to push them right down into her legs pretty much to the bottom, but I don't want to go through the bottom. And there'll be a wee bit sticking up that'll go up into her body. 
Okay, push your legs up into her body. And for a little extra support, I'm going to wrap a thin bit of cane that I've rolled out around the top of her legs. Kind of like pantaloons, I guess. But they're going to add a little extra support and kind of clean up that top area. I also added a piece of skewer to attach her head to her body. So let's take a look at her. I'll just stick her head on there and we'll see how she looks. So far so good. Let's pop her hat on too just to get a look. I'm not going to attach that right now but I just want to see you know how it's going to look when it's all assembled and um, we'll take care of that later. Now she's going to be holding a big paper valentine heart which will pretty much cover her entire body. So I rolled out wee hands that will get attached to the heart when, you know, she's totally assembled. And to make her hands, I just cut a small ball of clay in half. That's like the perfect shape. She's going to get a pointy nose like a chocolate chip. So just a tiny little cone. I'm going to roll it out and pop it on her face. And I'm just going to roll that clay Again, incorporating it with my tool. Okay, now I'll attach her head. I did use a couple of toothpicks to affix it to her head, but I don't know, my camera wasn't on. Sorry. You get the idea, though. So I'm just going to press it until I'm happy with it. And make some adjustments. And I think that looks good. I'm going to leave her overnight to dry. She dried nicely and she's ready for paint. So I'm going to start with her face and her arms and her wee hands. Each will get two coats of ceram coat tawny. I started out like this, but I wound up popping her head off because it was just far easier to handle than trying to, you know, work around her body when it wasn't really necessary. Know what I'm saying? Her dress and her hat will get two coats of ceram coat watermelon. I give her legs two coats of white. She's going to be wearing stripy stockings, so that's why she's getting white legs. While I have the white on the go, I'll add her eyes. I'm using my triple zero detail brush. Her eyes are arched like a capital D on its back. It's fallen and it can't get up. Hmm? Okay, so now I'm just going to fill them in and they'll get two coats as well. Ceram coat velveteal to dot in her irises. She's got the side eye going on. I was originally going to paint her hat and dress this color, but I changed my mind last minute. Anyway, we're also going to use this to stripe her stockings. And we'll put a couple of little stripes on her sleeves as well. Even though the majority of it will be covered by the paper heart, I'm still going to give her dress some detail. You know I am. Hmm. <laughs> so, a stripe along her hem, and she'll get a hat band too. Again in the uh, velvet teal. Ceram coat sun kissed coral to dot her cheeks just below her eyes. And you can see I'm just using the flat end of a brush handle to do this. With my triple zero detail brush, I outline her eyes with hippo gray. She'll get la la lashes and brows and a wee smile.
I dot her pupils with the hippo toe. Then I outline her hair with hippo gray before I fill it in. And you know what? Her shoes get two coats of shrimp coat hippo as well. I'm giving her sun-kissed coral lips too. Puck her up. We white stroke hearts on her cheeks, highlights for her lips, and dots for her eyes. Let's highlight her shoes too, just for kicks. Ha uh, ha, get it. Some hearts for her dress and stripes for her sleeves in between those velvet teal stripes. Now I'm gonna come back and outline her hair and add some details with ceram code charcoal. I'm grabbing my floating medium to add a wee touch of shading. I prep my brush by getting a healthy coat of the medium on the bristles, and I'm gonna side load by scooping up some raw sienna paint onto the corner of my brush. I stroke it on my plate to load the bristles, blending the medium and paint as I stroke. With the paint corner of my brush along her hairline, where I want my darkest shadow, I'll float right along, and I'm gonna reload my brush as needed. Now I'm going to float anywhere that I'd like a shadow to appear. So here on her nose and under her cheeks and mouth. And then I'm going to do around her arms too. I'm using my detail brush to add some fingers to her hands. Just wee little lines. And I'm going to also shadow under her eye with the, the detail brush and add a few character lines. Now loading my brush the exact same way as I did before, this time I'm using velvet teal. I'm going to float around her hat and dress, just to add a little extra something something. Yeah, so I'm just going to do this anywhere I think, you know, it needs it. With a cosmetic sponge, I'm going to pounce on a top coat of Mod Podge before we assemble her. It just makes it easier. I painted the wood disc with watermelon and I dry brushed the edges with velvet teal. This will be her stand. I'll use hot glue to attach her head to her body. I'm just gonna put some glue right into the hole at the bottom of her head. And I'll make sure that she's facing exactly where I want her to face. Okay, I'm going to wrap this garland around her neck to add some sparkle. This has wire in it so it holds itself together, but I'll add a drop of hot glue just to make sure it doesn't unwrap. I printed her Valentine heart onto cardstock and I trimmed it with glitter. I designed it in Photoshop. It says, you've bewitched me. Cute, right? I'm just going to use a little 3-in-1 glue to fix it to her hands. And I'm going to put a little on her belly too, since basically it lies across her belly. Keep it nice and steady. And now I'm going to glue her hands in place. I'm just going to use hot glue for this. And they're kind of really on top of the paper, more so than on the clay. I attach her to the base with both 3 and one glue and hot glue. To embellish her hat, I rolled up some of the garland into a little coil, and I'm going to add these little Dollar Tree glitter hearts.
and this sweet Valentine's witch is done. It wouldn't be Halloween without a couple of ghosts. To make the ghosts, I rolled two thick logs of clay, giving them points on the top, just the same way as I did the hat, basically. And I'm going to curve the points in towards each other to form a little heart. I'm pushing the ghosts together in a snuggle. Again, it doesn't really need glue or anything. It sticks really well to itself. I flattened a wee bit more clay, and I cut it into two small triangles. These are going to be the arms of the ghosts. I'll push them into place on either side of the snuggly ghosts. And again, I'll just work it the same way as I did before with my brush handle or tool handle. I add some draping detail with this pointy tool. A brush handle or a skewer would work too. And then I'm going to set these aside to dry overnight as well. In the meantime, I'll paint their base with watermelon and I dry brush the edges with velvet teal. Now that the ghosts are dry, I'm going to attach them to the base with some tacky glue. They'll get a couple of coats of white paint. I'm going to float some Tropic Bay Blue shading onto the ghosts, kind of getting into the nooks and those little drapey areas. I'll come in and dot their eyes with Hippo Gray. I'm dotting and kind of pulling down to elongate the eyes a wee bit. And of course the girl's going to get la-la lashes. I'm adding more shading, this time with Rain Gray. And again, just into the nooks and where the drapey bits are. They too will get a top coat of Mod Podge to seal them. And for some Valentine's fun, I glue a heart bead where their points form the heart. This is just off a Dollar Tree necklace. And finally, I printed a wee tombstone that says Forever Yours onto cardstock, and I distressed it with teal ink along the edges. I left a tab at the bottom so I could fold it over as a stand. And I'm just going to glue it right here in front, and we're done. Aw, eternally together, always and forever. Here's a final look. I hope you liked today's Halloween projects. I'm always up for a wee touch of Halloween, so I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to check everybody out. Um, plenty of talent on this playlist. You'll find links to everyone's channels, as well as a link to the playlist in the description box. You'll find a list of my supplies there, too. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.